Hello and welcome to week four of NFL Game Picks. Boy, oh boy, week three was one for the books. I think a lot of offensive output, not only from the Dolphins, but overall, I think a big week in, in week three. A lot of fantasy performance went off, which was cool to see. Uh, some guys, not so much. Anyways, I'll lead things off. Miami Dolphins had probably one of the biggest performances in quite some time. I'd probably say in the last what, 50 years in terms of offensive output. 10 total touchdowns, 70 total points. Uh, had the opportunity to get three more at the end of the game and set an NFL record. At least in the regular season, they would have tied an overall record. Uh, but with that being said, uh, I'm, I'm stuck in the middle when it comes to agreeing with Mike McDaniel about uh, going, not going for those three points. I think you have the opportunity to make NFL history, you go and do it. But uh, I understand the respect aspect, but eh, it is what it is. Aside from that, awesome performance. Really pleased with how the Finns did. Joey? Yeah, man, I was in Lambeau Field for Jordan Love's first start in Green Bay. Did not start the way any Packer fan wanted to, but it finished the exact way we hoped it would. <laughs> Packers win very by a small margin, one-point win. Comeback, though, 17-point comeback in the fourth quarter, largest in franchise history. We've had Brett Favre, we've had Aaron Rodgers here, and this is the largest in franchise history. Really cool to see Jordan Love get that for him. Confidence is growing. The team loves him. I'm having a great time watching the Green Bay Packers. Not really sure how this thing's going to end, but I'm having a ball, man. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh-oh. 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 Tough week, yet again. Got the blinders on. Tough week, yet again. I'm glad a lot of people weren't at work to watch me, watch this game, to hear me just yell and throw my hands up and just shake my head. I told my dad, I was like, it's going to be an unwatchable football game, and what happened? It was unwatchable. They literally it was took it off the air. They took it off the air. So that tells you how well or not well the Bears are playing. Um, yeah, it was just... It's tough. It's tough to watch them. I don't know whose fault it is. Management, coaching, Justin Fields. I don't know. Can't tell you. But it's not good. You know whose fault it was. It's not good. Man. Say it. Whose fault was it? If, if it's Taylor Swift's fault, I'm okay with it for this week. Because <laughs> I'll, I'll shake it off. You know what I mean? I'll shake it off. How many points did they win by? Was it 22? It was 34 to 0 oh, at geez. halftime. And then I think they won like 38. 42 to 10 or something like that. It was it was bad. They they could have they could have probably broke the record. They saw you guys had the line and were that. like, "Ah, we'll sit our guys. We'll send Kelsey up to this suite to see Mama Kelsey and T Swift at halftime and he'll just stay there, I guess." So Oh man. All right. Well, let's jump into the standings. Currently, I'm on top with a 34 and 14 record on the season. Not the best week out of everyone, uh but one of the better ones, 12 and 4. Uh, right behind me is Yadian. He had 11 5 week, uh, 11, yeah, 11 5 week with uh, 33 on the season, 15 losses, th uh, two way tie for a third place, Andres and Troy, uh, both at 31 and 17. Andres got the better week there. And then when it comes to overall best performance of the week, we have Alejandro Camargo with thir uh, 13 wins, three losses. And uh, shout out to you, great week. Great bounce back week after, uh, I think, not picking in uh, week two, which is unfortunate for him. Uh, but with that being said, I think we have some business to get to, and that is Thursday Night Football, and none other than Joey Gross to lead us off. Let's go. We got the Detroit Lions coming to Green Bay, Wisconsin, coming to the frozen tundra, coming to Title Town, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> to face the Green Bay Packers and Jordan Love. I am so hyped up for this game. I alluded to it. Having a great time watching the Green Bay Packers play. This is potentially going to be Christian Watson's first time playing this season. I don't know, but he's questionable. They've kind of leaked some crap. I don't know what's going on out of Green Bay, but apparently he's going to play. Uh, apparently Aaron Jones is going to play, but then again, the way the season is going, we have no clue what's going to happen. <laughs> Here's what we do know what's going to happen. David Bakhtiari, not playing this week. Elton Jenkins, not playing this week. And my boy Devondre Campbell are all out. They listed that today as of Wednesday, um, and that's what's up, man. So I don't really know what else to say about that. The inactives have been strong this year for the Green Bay Packers. Hopefully we get our offensive pieces back. I'm still excited for this game. If I wasn't sitting here wearing green and yellow, 
Uh, I probably picked Detroit, but I'm riding with my guys. I really just love how Jordan Love has not quit on himself this season, um, despite being down 17. You know, I mean, even even as the late game against Atlanta, he still showed a lot of fight. That pass to tour was incredible, even though they didn't come down with it. This time they were able to make do on a comeback. I'm loving what I'm seeing out of Jordan Love. If we can just get healthy as a whole up team, we have an early bye. I don't know, man. I have a good feeling, but it it, it it's it's just it's it's high faith. I will say that his like after the, what happened in Atlanta, any young quarterback easily could have been like, wow, like we couldn't even get the first down to like have a possible game winning drive, game tying drive. I, I, it would have been a game winning drive regardless because field goal would have won the game. Yep. But he didn't let that bother him, which was awesome to see. And then, boom, what does he do the following week? Comes back and wins a game against the New Orleans Saints. But how about, uh, let's bring in the resident uh, NFC North divisional rival. Let's do it. To uh, make his next selection. Well, you know I got a rival, Joe. I'm taking the Lions. Uh, like you <laughs> mentioned, a lot of guys out on that O-line for the Packers. I think a couple guys on the D-line for the Detroit Lions are going to eat. Specifically, hopefully, Aiden Hutchinson. I like watching him play. I'm going to take Detroit, even they're on the road, which is not so much on the road. Obviously, they're pretty close together. Um, and I think David Montgomery might make his return in this game. It is possible. He's been practicing. So, you know, shout out to the x Bear. Wish you were still here. Not really, honestly. Go win a couple games. You already got two up on us, which is two more than we're probably going to win this year. So... I'm going to get Detroit on the road against the Green Bay Packers. And hopefully uh, Jared Goff plays well because he's my starting quarterback in fantasy this week. Let's hope. Let's hope. Uh, I will be rocking with the Green uh, – nope, I'm sorry, guys. I'm rocking with the Detroit Lions. Come on. You're going to swerve <laughs> me like that, bro? What are we doing here? Uh, it was unintentional. It was, it was purely a, a typo coming out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, but in all reality – uh, this is second Thursday night game for the Detroit Lions. And then on top of that, um, just all those injuries to the Packers. It's a little bit hard to sway there. I would say maybe a game time decision, depending on if Aaron Jones could possibly play, because I think he's yep. such a huge factor. But at the end of the day, I think as it stands with all those injuries that we rattled off, I think it's not a good look for the Packers. But things are up in title town, and I think there's good things coming their way for this remainder of the season. All right, Chris, why don't you take us across the pond? You know where we're going? London, baby! And this is a home game for the Jaguars. I think they're going to win. I got the Jags. Hopefully my guy T-Law bounces back because he's looked awful bad to start off the year. Atlanta is one of those teams where, I don't know, you, you, you get a couple teams that start off a year hot, and are they real or are they fake? I would say like that was similar to something to like what happened to the Chicago Bears last year. You guys won what was what was your guys' record? Like three and five and like people kinda like we're still kinda optimistic about it. It's something like that, but you know, you get the point. You like the the Falcons aren't as good as their record alludes to. They've won a couple tight games. The Jaguars have lost a couple tight games. I'm rolling with my boys. They play a lot in London. Uh hopefully they can bounce back. This division's wide open and they need to start winning some games and give them giving themselves a couple quality wins and a couple uh, – and distance, distancing themselves from the other teams in that division. So give me the Jags. This is a home game for the Jaguars who are playing again in London next week. Yes, they're playing so, against uh, – the. yeah, they have two back-to-back games – like that back-to-back weeks in London uh, this week against the Atlanta Falcons. And then next week, technically at Buffalo, but in London – uh, so that's an interesting fact for them. I mean, th- I think this is the first time it's ever happened that a team, first of all, plays two uh, games in London in a single season. And if it was to be a team to do it, it would probably be the Jacksonville Jaguars. They basically have have a, a at least a toe in London already. They don't have their whole foot in the door type of vibe. I will say this Jaguars team has been a little bit underwhelming. Meanwhile, the Atlanta Falcons team has been exceeding expectations. And that, I think that's a huge part and due to uh, B. John Robinson's performance, I wouldn't point it all towards him. The team's playing really well, but if you had to point it towards one guy, it would definitely be B. John Robinson. With that being said, though, going with the Jacksonville Jaguars, they run London, and uh, I think they have a good opportunity to have uh, another win there. 
This is also the ESPN uh, Toy Story game. I'm very excited for it. I was a huge Toy Story fan as a kid, and I'm definitely going to be tuning into this version of it live from Andy's room. Not Bonnie's room. None of that Toy Story 4, toy, late Toy Story 3 garbage. It's Andy's room. We know it's Andy's room. <laughs> Nonetheless, I'm going with the Jacksonville Jaguars. I really like them a lot. They have not gone out to a really good start this year, but I have faith that they will bounce back against the Atlanta Falcons, who have looked really good this year. They did beat my Green Bay Packers in the comeback victory. It was really good. Um, they looked strong, but... I think that uh, Jacksonville could score early and often. You guys did allude to this like being a home game, and I, and I think the same thing. Um, thank you, Siri, for uh, talking about Indianapolis. But let's go with the Jacksonville Jaguars here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened there with my watch. <laughs> it's his room coming alive over here. It's all good. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, anyways, now let's get into the 1 p.m. window. We have the Baltimore Ravens versus the Cleveland Browns to lead us off. And I want to say that this is the Browns' third straight divisional game. They kicked off the season against Baltimore, uh, Cleveland, uh, my bad, Cincinnati. Uh, yeah, they kicked off the season against Cincinnati, then played Pittsburgh. Oh, no, they played the Titans right. last week. And then this year, this week, they're playing the Baltimore Ravens. I think the Ravens, it's hard. It's hard. I think the Nick Chubb injury is huge, but the Browns showed that it wasn't that big of a, a factor in terms of uh, the overall team performance, I think uh, Jerome Ford has played a good role in his absence. But I got to rock with the birds here. We're going to be flocking. The Ravens are probably one of the better teams uh, in this division overall. And I think uh, Lamar Jackson's play, even though it seems underwhelming at times, is the reason why this Ravens team is winning because they can be able to ground and pound and kill a clock out. And that's something similar to what Philadelphia has been doing to uh, win out a lot of these ball games. So here's the deal. Traded Jer uh, Jerome Ford. Uh, picked him up real quick. Traded him. Flipped him. I still think that he's very good, even though they signed Kareem Hunt. I think that the Browns are going to be very good. Uh, they this, this is a huge game for that division in general. Mm -hmm. This is probably to lead the division. Um, and I think it goes to the Browns. I did not like at all what I saw from Baltimore last week. I haven't really liked what I've seen from them all season, if I'm being completely honest. I feel like we're giving them the benefit of the doubt just because they have Lamar Jackson, Odell Beckham Jr., who I kind of thought it was going to be a great move week one. Chris, I'll give you that. You were right about it. It's not very good. He's old, he's washed, and it's not a good scenario. Lamar Jackson has yet to test that he can throw the ball very well. I know that there's a couple highlights out there of him throwing a deep ball, but there's also the same for Justin Fields, and look what's going on with him. <laughs> All I got to say is I'm going with the Cleveland Browns. I also haven't liked what I've seen from Deshaun Watson so far this year, but I'm going with the hot hand, and the Browns are the hot hand. This is a tough game to pick, I feel like. Obviously, it's a divisional game. Lamar Jackson's only thrown two touchdowns this year. That's concerning to me. Uh... Odell, like you mentioned, hasn't been very good. And he's probably not going to be available this week. I'm not sure yet. It's early on. But he's questionable. Rashad Bateman is questionable. Which leaves Dave Flowers and Nelson Aguilar. 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 Who can't catch a baby out of a burning building. So <laughs> I, I love that video. I think I'm going to take the Cleveland Browns at home. I don't love the pick. I think it will be a close game which the Ravens have had a few close games to start off the year. And I don't know. Give me the home team in this one, I feel like. I think right. that's the move. Um, I don't really know what to say. Both quarterback play has been underwhelming. That Nick Chubb injury was pretty gross. I thought he broke his leg. Yeah. Turns out it wasn't as bad as we thought. Hopefully he'll come back. I don't know. But for the time being, give me Cleveland. They just signed Kareem Hunt. Let's see what he does. Who you got for this next game? I'm sticking with the division for the next game. I have been very unimpressed by the Tennessee Titans. Uh, give me the Bengals. They got to get back on track at some point. Uh, they start off 0-2. Um, Joe Burrow pretty much said, hey, my health is l least important than us winning a game, less important than us winning this game. Uh, so they ended up winning, and they're 1-2 now. I think they're going to get back to 2-2. Two two. They always start the year off slow, so... I feel like they'll be all right. Give me 
give me Cincy on the road in Tennessee. Just I don't like anything about Tennessee right now. Yeah, me either. I'm going to go with Cincinnati as well. Cincinnati's probably going to get back to 500 hopefully this week. Shout out to Skyline Chili. I've yet to go back this season. Hopefully going to go this week for some Skyline Chili in a victory for 2-2 two and two at 500. Cincinnati Bengals. Shout out to Skyline Chili. Literally in my head, literally in my head, I was like, Let's see if Joey can go a Bengals game without mentioning Skyline, Skyline Chili. Chili. <laughs> and, and he couldn't do it, Joey. He couldn't Can't. do it. We gotta go to a game one day and get Skyline Chili. It, it would have been perfect game. this past Monday night to do it. We gotta go one time. Yes, I'm telling you. Well, what I really wanted to do, I want to go to a Reds Brewers game in Cincinnati and get some Skyline Chili. I think it'd be a good game. It's a baseball podcast. It's not, but hey, it's a little sidebar. If you know, you know. Yeah. All right, well, I will say that I'm also going to go with the Bengals here. Uh, This Titans team, uh, as much as I'm kind of up on them and think they have a good chance of coming out and and being big uh, when it comes to overall performance, I just think they're going to be outmatched here against this Bengals team. I think they have way too many good players on the roster. Uh, Joe Burrow, like what Chris said, is putting himself behind the team's uh, Needs like he he's putting the team's needs first instead of his own personal needs. So let's hope it doesn't come back and bite him. Uh, I'm knocking on wood for that. I think Chris is gonna have to find some type of alternative <laughs> to, oh, to, to, to knock on because uh, this guy. So you're saying we're going three way on the Bengals, just yep. like the chili three way at uh, Old Skyline, eh? It's there we go. yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> don't tell me with that. Don't tell me with that. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to tell you guys, the, the best thing to get from Skyline Chili is probably the chili cheese fries. I love that. They're fantastic. That was a game changer. Game changer. Game changer. And just get a dog on the side, a little coney on the... I'm getting out of hand. I'm sorry. <laughs> we got to go to Skyline Chili. Well, I think we got to go to this next game, which mm. is... I don't even want to talk about this game, but we got Seriously. the Broncos headed into the Windy City to take on the Bears, the two worst teams from last week. Might be one of the two worst teams in the NFL. Both are 0-3. Uh, both are 0-3. Both have lost last week by like a combined score of, I want to say, like 51 points or something. No, the, the Broncos lost by 50, so you got to add a little more there. Okay, so we lost by 81 points combined. There we go. Uh, this, this has, and then somehow the Broncos are favored against the Bears. <laughs> they are. But let me give my boys at home. Yes. Let's get a freaking win, guys. Like, come on. Like... <laughs> If, if we don't win this game, and if we lose the next game, clean house. Please. Fire everybody. I, I don't even know what to say to tell you guys to, to agree with me to pick the Bears because we're just awful. Um, everybody wants us to believe, oh, it's not Justin Fields. It's the coaching. They're not drawing up plays for him. They're not playing to his strengths. I don't know what it is. Honestly, burn the place to the ground and start over. I think that's the only solution. But for but- the time being... Even the Bears. But are you saying a burned soldier field down or the new Arlington Whoa. place? Like, what are you saying? I should probably not talk about a fire in Chicago because we all know. I don't know. Yeah, let me. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I, if we're moving to Arlington. They're not going to get any bets placed on the Bears. So it's like, why are we doing this? I don't know. Who knows if it's Justin Fields or if it's the coaching, but. They stink. We need a win, or the fans are going to start revolting. That's tough. That's tough. I made a pact after they didn't win week two against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I will never pick the Bears again. So, got to stick by that. I'm going to go with the Denver Broncos as much as I think they're not even a better choice. Like, I think, honestly, in this game, I might would have would have gone with the Bears, but a pack's a pack. You got you to gotta honor that one. And, honestly, it might benefit me. We'll see. We just have to find out. Once it comes around. But what about you, Joey? The Russ is cooking the back of Scotland. Oh, <laughs> man. This is very funny. I mean, the freaking Broncos suck. They got blown out by freaking 50 points. And Chicago sucks. We've known this for the past decade. Uh... Listen, I'm going to go with the Broncos, though. I feel like a team that needs a win more is probably Denver. Chicago sucks, and we all know it, and they're probably going to get the number one overall pick again, 
which is whatever. But the Denver Broncos had high expectations going into this season and last season, especially after trading. Didn't they trade a first-round pick for a head coach? First and a second. That's ridiculous. <laughs> and they're 0-3 to start the season. If they don't beat the Chicago Bears, man, wow. Okay, um, this is a completely awful look on Sean Payton's part. And a complete look on the Denver Broncos organization, John Elway, everyone involved. I'm going with the Denver Broncos in a must-win game for Denver. I find it completely funny that Sean Payton during training camp was like, man, this that was a horrible ter- a to- coaching job by Nathaniel Hackett. And then what happened to him last yep. week? Like that's, that's karma if I've ever seen it. Um, so shout-out to Mike McDaniel with uh, spreading around that good karma, not going yeah. for those extra three points. <laughs> but, uh, Joey, how about you take us to this next game? All right, we got the Los Angeles Rams traveling to Lucas Oil Stadium to face off against the Indianapolis Colts. Colts had a good game against the Baltimore Ravens last week, even though Gardner Minshew pulled a Dan Orlovsky and stepped out of the back of the end zone, <laughs> looking like a scrub. I'm going to go with the Los Angeles Rams here. I really love Kyron Williams. I alluded to it last week. Shout out to Notre Dame. Um, they had a interesting matchup, a Super Bowl rerun against the Cincinnati Bengals last week. They did not get the job done. Um I think that their opponent this week is a little bit different, but the, the record might not show it, but I don't think the Colts are that great. I'm going with the Los Angeles Rams, not to say that the, the Rams are that great either, but I think they got the better team this Sunday. Who would win in a fight, a Ram or a Colt? Ram. A Ram. You think? Yeah. A Ram would win? All right. Colts an object. Yeah. Huh? Colts an object. It's not a, well, it's a, oh, well, it's a you, horse. It's a horse. Yeah, but, you tell me a ram wouldn't kick a horse's ram. ass? I'm dumb. Oh, no, <laughs> Horses are pretty tough. Uh, Indianapolis is on a two-game win streak. Um, their rookie quarterback is still in concussion protocol mm-hmm. as of right now, which is Wednesday when we're taping this. So he might be out by the time Sunday rolls around. And if he does, I think I want to go with Indianapolis at home. Either way, I think I'm going to take Indianapolis at home. The Rams have not impressed me. Uh, Cooper Cup possibly might be on the mend, might be coming back Mm -hmm. soon. Maybe it'll turn things around a bit. But, I mean, like I've said before, I think they sold out for a Super Bowl, and I think they're fine with it. Uh, They're riding out Stafford's last few years, and then they're going to probably go through a total rebuild. Let me get Indianapolis at home. I don't love to pick, but I think it's a safe bet here. Well, I'll tell you what. The, the Photoshop here did not love your pick either. It was freaking the hell out when I put the Colts <laughs> for you. <laughs> but I will say, I'm going with the L.A. Rams. Um, they had a shortcoming of a game last week. I think they take advantage of this Colts team without their rookie quarterback. I'm not throwing any shade towards Gardner Minshew. I think he's an absolute stud. But... I think this Rams team is better than the Indianapolis Colts, unfortunately. Uh, but they're still holding strong, even without Anthony Richardson in there. And uh, next week is going to be interesting to see what is going to happen with Jonathan Taylor and this Indianapolis Colts team. Does he get traded? Does he stay on the team? Does he see the potential that they could possibly have a, a really good chance of actually winning the division, making a good playoff run? We'll just have to wait and see after at least, for sure, at least after next week. Um, but aside from that, This L.A. Rams team is going to take it. And now, it's time. We got the Miami Dolphins versus the Buffalo Bills. We got it. I wish this would have been flexed to, like, uh, Sunday Night Football or something. But we'll do, we'll do, we'll we'll make do with uh, 1 p.m. on this one. Uh, This is a big divisional game between both of these teams. Dolphins come into this game 3-0. Buffalo's 2-1. Thank you to New York Jets for handing them a week one loss. Because uh, otherwise, both teams will be 3-0, and which honestly probably would have made it more interesting. But if the Dolphins could have any type of further lead on this Buffalo Bills team, the better for them. Uh, you already know who I'm rocking with. I'm rocking with the Miami Dolphins, 305 to the city. And, uh, man, I don't know. It's going to be a tough task for Miami. Uh, let's hope Jalen Waddle can come out of concussion protocol and be a big factor in this game. But after the explosive week Miami just had with the running backs, I'm expecting Buffalo to be all in on trying to stop the Dolphins' running game. Given, I don't think they're on the same level at all as the Denver Broncos. I think they're way ahead of them, way above them, way better than them. But at the end of the day, you got to respect the run at all costs. But you also have to respect the pass. Tua has shown that he's been able to burn defenders deep if Tyreek or Waddle gets open. 
And uh, he can also dissect the defense. So whatever he key gets thrown at him, he's been able to take advantage of. Uh, but aside from that, fins all the way. Let's go. Yeah, man. I think I'm going to have to go with the Dolphins as well. The Buffalo Bills kind of show their true colors of what they are inside of their division. Uh, week one against the Jets, in my opinion. They did beat the crap out of the Washington Commanders last week. Don't really think that says a lot. Um Go with Miami Dolphins. They scored 70 effing points uh, last well, watch week. Out. Let's go. Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins. Give me the Dolphins, man. Miami I don't Dolphins. Know. I, you got to go with the Dolphins, man. Uh, they're, they're moving around like a dolphin in the ocean before every play. Uh, <laughs> Mike McDaniels has these boys just sprinting up and down the, the line of scrimmage 50 times a game uh, before the ball is even snapped. You guys are going to have the most miles tracked in the NFL, <laughs> Probably. I feel like. But you guys have some of the fastest guys in the NFL. And I haven't been impressed by the Bills. And I think they might – I could be wrong. I think they might be falling apart. I don't think Stefan Diggs is necessarily happy there. And, and that's the guy. Yeah. That's the guy. I just picked up Gabe Davis while I traded for him in, in my fantasy. So I hope he has a good day. Shout out UCF, go Knights, baby. We should have won last week. Anyways, give me the Dolphins on the road. You got to ride with the hot hand here, I feel like. And they have looked so good, and the Bills just haven't. Yeah. Uh, you were singing the, the little Miami Dolphins like fight song. Uh, <laughs> I played 10 times <laughs> last Sunday, which is it, it's awesome, but it kind of like gets in your head, and you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from that, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, they just they just got to have a good performance out here. And should the Dolphins lose, I'm not saying they are, but should they lose, I hope at least it's in a fighting effort and it's not uh, the Bills just dominate the Dolphins because that would be very, very upsetting for this Dolphins team who, uh, with a win like this against the Buffalo Bills, could be one of the top teams in the entire NFL. I'm talking to you, Pete Prisco. Put the Dolphins number one. What are we doing here? Uh, but anyways, Joey, why don't you take us to this next game? We have the Minnesota Vikings going to Carolina to face off against the Panthers. And I am going with the new uh, – sorry. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. I'm going with the Minnesota Vikings here to get their first win of the new year. Oh. Um, listen, the Panthers suck, and Andy Dalton it didn't look that great last week. I know Bryce Young might play this week, but I don't think he looks that great so far this season. And the – Vikings, they've looked okay so far in their losses, so I'm going with the Vikings. Yeah, I'm definitely going to jump on that wave and go with the Vikings as well. Uh, if you pit these two teams against one another, which they are going to be on Sunday, I will go with the Vikings probably nine times out of ten. And you got to tell me, like, Justin Jefferson is having, like, a flu game or something that he's not going to be at, performing at all-time best because I don't think they're going to be able to contain him in that secondary um, they do have some young studs in that secondary for the Carolina Panthers, but at the end of the day, I mean, this Vikings team shouldn't be 0-3. I think they should be at least 1-2. They should have won against the Chargers last week. And the Carolina Panthers, without Bryce Young, uh, they put a lot of their efforts towards building Bryce Young up and, and being the guy for this team. And currently he's down, which is unfortunate. But Andy Dalton does give him a fighting chance. I don't think it's going to be a blowout win, but I think it's going to be a close one. Vikings come out on top. Vikings O, good. Vikings D, bad. Yes, very bad. Give me the Vikings on the road. Carolina stinks. If you have Adam Thielen on your bench, put him in the lineup in like a flex or at least, I don't know how many wide receivers you have. If you have three, put him in. Andy Dolan loves the slot receiver, which is where Adam Thielen is going to primarily play every snap. Uh, Kirk Cousins, I feel so bad for you, man. Like, if anybody's... To get traded to a better team, I kind of hope it's him. <laughs> it's just I feel so bad for him. The dude, the dude is having a pretty good year, and he's just getting lit up on every play. Like you mentioned, Bryce Young, he's way too small. It's like Mia back there playing in the NFL. It's not good. <laughs> Dude's getting tossed around like a freaking rag doll. Give me the Vikings. And they've been blitzing on like 85%. That's an exaggeration, but they've been blitzing on like – a lot of their plays, a historical number of plays. The defense. The defense Vikings the defense. Vikings have. I don't know if it's time to let up, especially if Bryce Young does end up playing. But, like, you got to back off a little bit, man. Like, 
like, give some of these guys some chances. Like, Kirk Cousins sitting on the sidelines, like, hey, what are we freaking doing here, man? You got guys streaking down the sidelines, scoring 70-yard touchdowns against them all game. That's Even tough. the Vikings, hopefully they figure this defense thing out for the sake of uh, all Vikings fans out there. I will say that is a signature Brian Flores defense that is blitzing a shit ton. Uh, but we'll go to the next game. We have the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Houston Texans. Houston is bringing out their battle red, red helmets against the Steelers. And uh, Steelers had a great win. I wouldn't call it the best one, but they at least came out on top victorious against a Las Vegas Raiders team who uh, I wouldn't say the refs got involved in the game. But I think the the rough in the passer call was, you know, not obvious and not too egregious, but it is what it is. But it never they never wavered. They were able to shut it down. Uh, our boy Pat Pete got cooked, and then he was doing some cooking. So that was cool to see. <laughs> uh, with that being said, I'm going to keep on riding with this Steelers wave. I think the Steelers have a better chance against a rookie QB, and I think they can manipulate his uh Vision and, and and take advantage of him ma making some wrong reads. So that will be interesting to see. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Pittsburgh Steelers here. The Houston Texans, ha Texans have looked strong so far this year. But I don't know. I really do like Pittsburgh a lot, uh, despite eh, being kind of a mid-level team. Um, this matchup kind of does favor them a lot. I don't really like Kenny Pickett that much, but I'm going to go with the Steelers. Uh, Najee Harris, I don't really think you have a place in the NFL. It's tough. That's tough. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think J.J. Watt is getting inducted into the Texans' ring of honor during this mm, game. Interesting. Um, which so happens to be a game against? The Pittsburgh Steelers. And his, his brother. Brothers. I think, I think Derek is still on the Steelers, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not mistaken, but the only one that matters is T.J. Uh, so... It's kind of cool that he's doing it right in front of his brother. Um, I think his brother's going to show out. His brother is probably going to set the sack record this year, maybe be defensive player of the year. That being said, give me the Texans at home. I like C.J. Stroud. I think he has been really good, and it's not just me. It's not an eye test. Mm -hmm. The numbers don't lie. He's a top five quarterback in the league right now through three games. And he's a rookie. So you tell me you, you add a decent team around him, maybe get a better coach or something like that, he's going to figure it out. Give me the Texans at home. I'm going against the grain here. I kind of thought you guys would have agreed with me a little bit more. But that being said, I actually did like what I saw from Kenny Pickett last week. He made some throws. Um, I was talking to our boy Mark about it at work. Uh, but – Sorry, Mark. I'm going with the Texans at home. I don't get to pick them a lot. Uh, did not have a great time in Houston personally the <laughs> one time I've been there. But uh, <laughs> give me Houston. All right. Who we got for this uh, next game, huh? I like this next game. I got a lot, of, a lot of Tampa Bay fans, a lot of Saints fans. We got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers heading to NOLA for a good division game. Two 2-1 two and one teams facing off. Is it going to be Jamison or is it going to be Derek Carr? Derek Carr's out. Let's just say. Yeah. It's going to be a good old Jamison. Honestly, I haven't made my pick yet. But I would say this. I still am not sold on Baker. Okay. I don't know if this team is legit or not. I think you got to ride with the home team here. Playing in the dome, playing at home playing with one of the best fan bases backing you. I feel like you have to go with the Saints, despite a couple of key injuries. Um, let me get the Saints. Don't love what I've seen out of the Bucks. I kind of want them to just trade all those wide receivers away, honestly. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, I really like the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers a lot this season, but the New Orleans Saints did come back – or, uh, sorry, did blow a comeback against the Green Bay Packers – um, I think it has a lot to do with the kind of coming in on short notice for Jameis Winston, even though he did drive them downfield. And if it wasn't for a missed field goal, they probably would have won the game. I am going to go with the New Orleans Saints. I think Jameis Winston has a vendetta against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for it being his former team that he was drafted to, uh, and such and such. Uh, I'm going with the Jameis Winston led New Orleans Saints here on Sunday. 
And I, I do have to agree with the both of you. I will be rocking with the New Orleans Saints. I think very much so that Jameis Winston is, what is it? Oh, what? He's going to be eating a W mm. against his Tampa Bay Buccaneers team, against his former team. And guess what? I mean, this is, it's, it's, he couldn't write a better script. I mean, the NFL script writers are just going off at this point, huh? Uh, with that being said, I mean, this, this New Orleans Saints team, it will be interesting, though, to see how Jameis performs with a full week. And that's what the expectation that he's actually going to be the starting quarterback. Uh, I don't think Garrett Carter is going to come back. Um, they said it was AC joint. So I yeah, I think you got to – yeah, you're going to have to wait that one off for a little bit. But we'll just move on to this next game. We have the Washington Commanders versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles are heavily favored in this game. But Washington – is two and one and uh, competing for a top spot in the division uh, alongside uh, the the Dallas Cowboys who are also two and one. But Philadelphia remains a top dog, three and zero. Oh. Uh, I will say the birds are going to take this one easily. Uh, I don't think it's going to be much of a competition. I think there's going to be a good um, spread in terms. Uh, right now, Vegas has it set at eight points. I would say more or less that would, that's around correct. Uh, but I think it could be possibly a 10-point win for the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, let me get the Philadelphia Eagles. Philadelphia. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you watched that Commanders game last week. Sam Howell stinks, dude. People are trying to tell me he's better than Justin Fields. He's not. Give me the Eagles. <laughs> he stinks. Eagles are way better. The tush bush is alive and real. Enough said. It's OP. Uh, yeah, man, I think I got the Philadelphia Eagles easily winning this game. I did put a parlay in with them, the Braves, and the Milwaukee Bucks to win all of their respective championships this season. The Bucks, Dame time. Braves are great. Eagles, favored in the NFC. I don't know. San Francisco looks pretty good. But I'm going with the Eagles in this one. They're easily going to win this game. Joey, take us to the first 4 o'clock game. Listen, man, we got the Las Vegas Raiders going to Los Angeles to get to play the Chargers. This is going to be a great game, in my opinion. Uh, the Chargers defense is so-so, and the Raiders defense is so-so. I think it's going to be really high scoring with a lot of firepower on both sides, especially with Devontae Adams. We really don't know what, uh, about Jimmy G or not uh, throwing that ball. Maybe Josh Jacobs pops off this game. We don't know. But the real headliner of this game, Matchup is going to be Justin Herbert in that offense. Mike Williams out for the season, so Quentin Johnston will probably step up. Keenan Allen had a great game last week. I really like the Chargers in this one. I like Justin Herbert a lot this year. He's my fantasy quarterback in a lot of leagues. I'm going with the Chargers. Uh, maybe Austin Eckler plays this week. Who knows? Yeah, he's rumored to possibly return in this game, and I wholeheartedly agree with you with Quentin Johnston. If he can come out and be a baller, that'll be huge. Uh, I picked him up in a couple of leagues and more so like I, I drafted him in, in a couple of leagues and that was more so just banking on the fact that and it's not me saying that I'm expecting him to go down but uh banking on the fact that Keenan Allen or Mike Williams would go down because I think he can fill in their shoes pretty well uh with that being said Las, uh, Los Angeles Chargers is the pick for me I think Herbert is playing really well it's unfortunate that they they started off the season 0-2 but they got a big win against the Minnesota Vikings last week. On top of that, going for it on fourth down from your own 24 is absolutely bonkers. Uh, it was a desperation move. Luckily, it worked out for them, but let's see what they can do against this Las Vegas Raiders team. Man, the bad storylines around the Raiders continue. You got Chandler Jones just off in the distance, losing his mind still on social media, just trashing the team. Give me the bolts. Like you mentioned, Eckler practiced today. He actually looked pretty good. He was jumping up and down, which tells me ankle feels pretty good if he's <laughs> jumping up and down. I don't know if Quentin Johnson is to play this week. No. I think he's more of a long-term, like, put him on your bench, let him see how he plays a couple weeks. Josh Palmer is probably the short-term type of guy. Mm -hmm. um, if you told me the bolts were going to be 1-2 and two or 0-3, oh and three, to start off the year, because they were almost 0-3, I would probably would have told you I didn't believe it. Um, but they, they need to turn it around here. They need to get a big win. Garoppolo, I don't think is that guy. Let me get the bolts, and hopefully they can win, honestly, because I'm a big fan of Justin Herbert, and I wanted to see him succeed. All right. 
What we got next, Chris? We got the Arizona Cardinals going to San Fran. I think this is a very easy game to pick. I think you're crazy not to pick San Fran, although Arizona has hung around in almost every game they've played this year. Joshua Dobbs jerseys just went on sale officially. <laughs> um, unfortunately for him, unless you start dating Rihanna in the next week, I don't think you're going to have quite the sales like Kelsey has had, who his sales jumped 400% thanks to Taylor Swift. Oh, my gosh. Um, so unless you start dating Rihanna or something like that, I don't think you're going to have that great success. I don't think he's going to have that great success on the field either. Give me the obvious choice here in San Fran at home. Enough said. Yeah. This is oh, okay. You, I got, uh, you can go uh, for uh, it, man. Uh, go uh, for uh, it. Uh, <laughs> back to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I will just say that San Fran is favored by 14 touchdowns. Don't really have to say much else. I think the San Fran 49ers are going to run away with this one. Uh, but Arizona has been interesting. It's hanging around a lot of their games. Uh, finally got a win last week against the Dallas Cowboys, which was surprisingly unexpected. Uh, so kudos to them. Uh, a lot of people thought they were going to be tanking, but uh, I think the Bears took the cake on that one. Yeah, this is really the easiest game to pick all week. San Francisco is going to wax the floor with them. <laughs> they might even score 70 this week. San Francisco 49ers for the win, 4 0. <laughs> nice, short, and sweet. All right, we got probably, I think, America's game of the week. It's the uh, New England Patriots versus Dallas Cowboys. Uh, probably the two most patriotic teams in the entire NFL uh, with America's team and a team literally named Patriots. Uh, but I will say, <laughs> I will say uh, the Dallas Cowboys, man, if they drop this game to the New England Patriots, what are we doing here? This is not a good look for this Dallas Cowboys team should they drop two in a row to teams that they should easily beat. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to go with the Dallas Cowboys. I think they are the far supreme team here, but if Dak you know, throws into triple coverage again. I think this new Dallas Cowboys team is going to have a lot of questions. And we might start talking about Trey Lance a little bit more. So that's going to be something to look out for. Well, Trey Lance is still broken. So there were a few weeks off from that. I'm, again, I'm back to the same place. Who would win in a fight, a Patriot or a Cowboy? That's my That's, that's a my great line. matchup. Also, <laughs> also. <laughs> Ezekiel Elliott revenge game? Yes. Perhaps? Yes. Probably not. He is washed, in my opinion. Give me the stars. Let me get Dallas at home. They had a very, 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 very Dallas Cowboy-ish game last week, losing to a trash team. And everybody's like, oh, it happens once a year. You know how the Cowboys are. But that's not a good thing. When your quarterback throws an interception in a crucial moment into triple coverage, like you said, to pretty much – lose the game, mm -hmm. not a good sign. So I don't love the Dallas Cowboys, but that's what I'm taking this week. I love how the NFL memes account came out instantly with a, uh, y'all saw them boys, and it's <laughs> Joshua Dobbs. Yep. <laughs> you saw the Micah Parsons thing where he was on his podcast, and he's like, I'm throwing darts at Josh Dobbs on my dartboard all week. And then Do Josh Dobbs came back, and he's like, did a, a video, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh so well, for all you guys listening without video this is me dodging dodging <laughs> darts over here <laughs> all i gotta say is another funny meme from the from the cowboys losing is hey dallas what's the letter what's the letter what's the letter what's the letter the letter of the day is L. L. <laughs> it's the letter of the day. I think the letter, the letter of the day is going to be L again for the Dallas Ooh. Cowboys. I'm going with the New England Patriots. They look pretty strong in all of their losses all year. The Dallas Cowboys ha have looked strong all year, but this game against the Arizona Cardinals was kind of an eye-opener for me. I'm going with the uh, New England Patriots on this one. All right, what do you got for Sunday night football? Uh, Sunday night football game. The Kansas City Chiefs are traveling to New York to face off against the losers. I mean, the New York Jets. Um, and listen, this one's going to be the, probably the easiest. I mean, I've said this about a lot of matchups all <laughs> week, but this, this is probably the easiest game to pick. This and the San Francisco game. I can't make up my mind. These games are too lopsided, god dang it. I'm going with the Kansas City Chiefs. Shout out to the damn barbecue over there in Kansas City. Love the food. New York sucks. Zach Wilson's a fraud. Let's keep her going. Yeah, I'm going to go with the uh, Kansas City Swifties over here. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't pick the New York Jets in my wildest dreams. Um, 
I think Travis Kelsey's going to find a blank space in the end zone and score a touchdown. Should I keep going? Keep do going. it. Do it. Keep moving. But, uh, no, the Jets stink, bro. And they're going to pick up a quarterback at some point. They just picked up Trevor Simeon, who got cut by the Bears. And if he can't start for quarterback for the Bears, what does that tell you? <laughs> um, I'm not upset about anything that's happening to the Jets. They're my second least favorite team in the league. Um not going to get into the reasons why, but let me get KC. They're the better team. And wow, two cupcake games in a row for KC. I hope you guys are feeling good, honestly. They did talk about Kansas City's schedule after beating the Jacksonville Jaguars, and it was not the, the hardest strength of schedule, I would say. So they're going to get off to a good run here, and I think uh, they, they can uh, – Probably uh, blow out the uh, New York Jets here. Uh, spread is at currently nine and a half. Sheesh. I think they go way over that. Uh, so I would bank my money on that. I think Kansas City is going to start going on a nice little tear, and it's going to be more so like what Chris said. Their strength of schedule, the teams they're going to be facing, it's going to be uh, pretty pretty easy for them. So that's going to be interesting to watch out for. Shout out Joe Namath, man. Oh, yeah, Chris. shout out to him. Dude, dude, he ripped him. Speaking yeah, the truth. But you know, you know what the truth is around that? What? They're very comparable quarterbacks. <laughs> you know how many touchdowns Joe Namath threw in the Super Bowl? How many? The same amount that I've thrown in the Super Bowl. There we go. A big old zero. Dude, so all, all you Jets fans, oh, what is he famous for? He predicted that they were gonna win. It was rigged. Everybody predicts they're going to win. I'm not going to tell you, oh, yeah, I think we're going to lose this Super Bowl. Like, oh, no. He didn't this just stinks, predict bro. they were going to win. He guaranteed it. He guaranteed it. He like guaranteed it. Come on, man. Why wouldn't you? He sucks. <laughs> and so does Zach Wilson. Give me the greatest quarterback in the world and the greatest quarterback maybe of all time when it's all said and done, Patrick Mahomes. Okay. Enough said. Yeah, the guy that the the Bears chose uh, Mitchell Trubisky over. That's fine. <laughs> Shit happens. That's it does. <laughs> Shit does happen, and guess what's about to happen? We're going to go to Monday Night Football. We have the Seattle Seahawks versus the New York Giants. Giants are the team in the NFL that has had the longest stretch of rest, and uh, I don't think it benefits them. And I think the Seattle Seahawks come out on top. I think they, uh, they're they going to have a good running attack, and that's going to be the deciding factor on whether or not they come out and win this game. A, a factor to watch is does Saquon Barkley come back for this mm-hmm. matchup, which I hope he does for fantasy purposes. Uh, but this Giants team is very underwhelming coming off of a playoff appearance last year. What do you got to say here, Joey? All I got to say is the Seahawks are going to win this game. No shade off the Giants. They did have a nice comeback a couple, I think it was last week with mm-hmm. Saquon getting his injury. Um, yada, yada, yada. They haven't looked that great all year. We know this. Neither team has. I don't think the Seahawks have looked incredible mm-hmm. all year either, even though they are 2-1. and one. Regardless, I'm going to go with Seattle in a Geno Smith revenge game. Um, I would really like to pick New York right here. I ho- was hoping that they would have a pretty decent season. But... Uh, they just they're just not and I'm going with the hot hand and that's Seattle. I don't know what the hell yada 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 means, honestly. You never watched Seinfeld? I've watched Seinfeld. Yeah, so you know damn well what yada I'll yada yada, yada means. At home. I don't know. I, I love what I'm seeing out of Gino. He does actually look like a leader. Could could this possibly be like the greatest comeback as just like a overall player of all time? He, I mean, he goes from getting his jaw broken by teammates to elevating his team that's really not that great to actually being winners, uh, perhaps. But I'm taking the G-Man at home. I really liked what I saw from Daniel Jones last year. Haven't really seen a whole lot of that this year. I think it might change. I don't know. I like the home team. If Saquon comes back, too, I definitely like the Giants a little bit more. Give me the Giants. Don't love the pick, but I got to make up some ground here from you guys, and I think this is one of the games to do that. Right. Yeah, on top of that, I just think overall, should Saquon Barkley come back, that will be just a huge, huge lift to this uh, Giants offense, which is very needed. Given last week they ran into pretty much a buzzsaw in San Francisco, uh, but with that being said, I think that wraps up week four of NFL game picks. 
Let us know what you guys thought of our picks and any last words from the boys. Well, fo fo, week four. We're like fo, Wendy's fo, out fo. here, dog. Go pack go. <laughs> Big divisional game tomorrow. <laughs> yes, sir. And then we also got Miami Dolphins, probably one of the bigger one o'clock window games. So really pumped for that. Let's hope the Finns come out on top. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Bear down.